Does watching The Witcher on Netflix have you thinking about a career change? Do you want to be the one people are throwing coins to? Well, before you sign up for being a Witcher, I have some bad news for you. They're not real. Take a moment to uh, accept that and compose yourself. Even if they did actually exist, becoming one isn't easy, and it comes with some serious side effects. Geralt of Rivia makes it look easy. Well, sometimes, but let's talk about how witchers are created and what being a golden-eyed monster hunter really entails. If you thought finding a job in today's economy was tough, just think about what it would be like in a fantasy setting, like where The Witcher takes place. For every high-flying adventurer, there are hundreds of laborers who will probably never see the outside of their dreary villages. Even the great and powerful Yennefer of Vangerberg once lived that difficult farming life before being taught the ways of magic. In this world, many people follow their parents' footsteps and grow up learning a useful trade. But this isn't really an option for witchers for one very important reason. Witchers definitely get some awesome perks, which I'll talk about in detail later, but there are some drawbacks as well. One of which is that the process of becoming a witcher renders the individual completely sterile. They're unable to reproduce and thus can't create the next generation of witchers without obtaining recruits from somewhere else. And for some reason, most parents don't encourage their kids to become monster-hunting mutants. Wow, talk about unsupportive. According to legends, most children who grew up to become witchers were payment for the invocation of the Law of Surprise. There's even a rumor that Geralt was once such a child, although he refuted this himself in the book Sword of Destiny. If you're interested in the history and ins and outs of the Law of Surprise, there's a great video by us here at CBR that you can watch on the topic. But for the quick version, it's an ancient custom which comes into play when one person saves the life of another. The person who did the saving can invoke the Law of Surprise and request what you find at home yet don't expect as an award. This could be anything from a fresh crop of turnips to a living child. So, needless to say, it's quite the gamble. Fans of the Witcher franchise know that the Law of Surprise is how Ciri came into custody of Geralt. The first time was when he saved Dooney from being eliminated by Queen Callan's soldiers and was awarded Dooney's child with Princess Pavetta. Then he ended up unknowingly naming Ciri as his reward again after he saved the merchant Yurga. Since Witchers are proficient warriors who do a lot of monster fighting, it's understandable that they end up saving many lives. Not that people are always grateful for their help, but when they invoke the Law of Surprise, they can end up with children to take in as recruits and raise them to become Witchers. The process of becoming one of these warriors takes a long time, and so it's important that recruits get an early start. They're sent to a Witcher school such as Kaer Morhen, which is just about as on par with Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry in terms of being incredibly dangerous to students, but without the fun of getting to fly around on broomsticks. These schools are a little bit different from one another in terms of teaching technique and overall mindsets, but they all get the job done. They subject their students to intense mental and physical conditioning and train them to use a wide variety of weapons, including the essential silver and steel swords that they're known for carrying. The silver sword is used for fighting supernatural enemies who are weak against this particular metal. It can help take down necrophages, shapeshifters, wraiths, vampires, and more unpleasant creatures. But don't try this at home, and not just because these things aren't real. A Witcher's Silver Sword is inscribed with runes which make it usable, since silver is one of the softer metals out there. They also carry a steel sword to fight against enemies that aren't sensitive to silver. These weapons are much less fragile, so they're more universally useful and can take a lot more damage. But becoming a Witcher isn't all life-threatening training, physical and mental exhaustion, and learning which sword to use when. It also requires students to partake in alchemical processes and consume mutagenic compounds. Witchers need to be able to fight against any possible foe, so their training covers pretty much every contingency imaginable. Their knowledge and mental reserve helps them assess threats, and their physical endurance and enhanced abilities help them eliminate any possible threat. I know all of this sounds really awesome, and honestly, it's just going to get cooler for a little bit, so strap in. All of those special potions and mutagenic concoctions give the Witchers some pretty sick abilities. Nobody can be blamed for getting lost in Henry Cavill's beautiful eyes, but Geralt's eyes are more than just lovely pools of amber. These cat-like eyes enable Geralt and other Witchers to see things regular humans cannot. In darkness, they can open their pupils wide in order to see better, or if it's blindingly bright, they can contract their pupils to maintain their vision. Their vision can be further enhanced by the use of potions, but even their baseline eyesight is incredibly impressive. 
In fact, all of a Witcher's senses are enhanced far beyond those of non-Witchers. They have increased strength, speed, reflexes, and stamina, which allows them to engage in tough battles with minimal effort on their part. A single Witcher can take down an enemy that a whole horde of regular humans would struggle with. Even their sense of smell is way better than average, which helps them identify creatures and track them down. And if the fact that their senses are all superior to ours wasn't enough, they also have a sixth sense, which allows them to sense things around them. Like their other abilities, this provides a massive advantage when the Witcher is on the hunt for something, or someone. They also have amazingly powerful immune systems, so coming down with the flu is the least of their worries. They're also incredibly difficult to poison and can guzzle down a staggering amount of potions that the average person couldn't handle. Witchers also have the ability to heal quickly, and they age slowly, resulting in a long lifespan. Geralt's father figure, Witcher Vesemir, was said to be older than Kaer Morin itself. Becoming a Witcher seems like it would be awesome, but you know what's also great and doesn't come with unpleasant side effects? Keeping up with the latest videos from CBR! You don't need a special sword to defeat the YouTube algorithm. Just click on that subscribe button and then turn on your notifications and adjust your notification settings if you're on your phone. Now let's get back to the Witcher. Earlier, I talked about the weapons used by these warriors, but they do use a little bit of magic as well. As part of their training, they learn how to use combat magic. These spells have quick casting times and pair well with traditional forms of weaponry. They pale in comparison to what a sorcerer can accomplish given more time and materials, but they're suited quite well to the fighting style and purpose of a Witcher. There are a lot of great things which come with being a Witcher, but there are definitely some drawbacks as well. The sterility I mentioned earlier can either be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on if you're a kid person or not. There's also the belief that Witchers can't feel any emotion. Not only does the average town person believe this, but so does the average Witcher. But it's likely that due to their exhaustive training and the constant life-threatening dangers they face that they've simply just gotten really good at hiding their emotions even from themselves. When you have monsters to slay, you don't really have time to enjoy a nice existential crisis. Witchers also have to deal with a lot of social stigma. People rely on them to fight enemies they're not capable of dealing with themselves, but that doesn't mean they're happy about it. Most people find their unnatural abilities and magic use to be unnerving, and the idea that they can't feel normal human emotions certainly doesn't help much. There was a time when witchers were at least a little less hated, but that was when there were a lot more monsters running around, and their services were required more often. Yes, there was a time when witchers were seen as a good idea, at least by some people. Before the witcher schools were established and warriors like Geralt started fighting creatures for coin, there was the Order of Witchers. This was long before their potions and mutagenic concoctions would be perfected, so they wore heavy armor and giant helmets that looked like something out of Spaceballs. Back in the 10th century, humans were trying to get rid of as many non-humans as possible, but they had one big problem. Namely, that a lot of these creatures had magical powers or big scary fangs that most knights just didn't have. So kings and their mages decided to set up the Order of Witchers, which was supposed to be a group of warriors who would blend magic and weapons to become ultimate monster fighters. At first, things looked grim, and the mages were disappointed in the mutated witchers they'd created who were capable of only the most minor of magics. But eventually, they managed to fine-tune the procedures and establish the witcher schools, which took a more mercenary approach to fighting monsters than the Order had. If you thought your final exams were bad, just wait until you learn what finals are like for witchers. All those nifty abilities I talked about earlier? You only get those after going through a bunch of heinous trials that come with pretty grim survival rates. One of the most painful and dangerous is the trial of grasses, and it's not the sort of test you can study for. Instead, students pretty much chow down on a whole bunch of special herbs and hope that they manage to survive. This Bear grill style test has a dismal survival rate, and only about 3 out of every 10 students survive. Oh, and those who failed didn't go quietly into the great beyond. They suffered pure agony before passing away. All in all, this test can take a week before students either perish horribly or survive. But according to Geralt, this trial is how he got his sweet white locks, so worth it. A less horrific and more Hogwarts-style test is the Trial of Forest Eyes. During this ordeal, students are only brought out into the woods, blindfolded and tied up. No big deal. They have until the next morning to return to their keep and being punctual is a must if you don't want to fail. Then there's the Trial of the Dreams, which involves the eyes mutating into their signature witcher color, as well as changes to the students' bone marrow and hormones. This is the step that causes infertility, but after the Trial of Grasses, it sounds like a walk in the park. 
But before you get all of these fun trials, young witchers must make the choice. They must voluntarily follow a strict witcher diet of herbs, mosses, and mushrooms, which provides fuel for all of the nightmarish physical training. Best case scenario, you survive and go on to other ordeals. Worst case, your organs shut down and you lose your mind. Being a witcher definitely sounds like at least a little bit less fun now, doesn't it? And once you pass all the trials and complete your training, it's time to embark on the path, which is a nice way of saying you wander around aimlessly looking for monsters to fight and trying to collect coins from humans who generally dislike and distrust them. But hey, you get two swords and a magic pair of eyeballs, so it's not all bad, just most of it. Would you want to become a witcher despite all the difficulties and potentially unpleasant side effects? Let us know if you'd sign up for that particular career in the comments section, and then click on the subscribe button and turn on your notifications to get access to more great content from us here at CBR. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.